I'm talking about the management of chronic jo VIP joint injuries. And uh, you have to understand that it's a spectrum of injuries, you know, not just one thing as uh, Pangaj has already done most of the talking. I will just show you a few things uh, where uh, you can have an open injury, you can have injuries that are late, malunited, or most of them actually come with a very stiff and painful finger. That is, it doesn't move. These are, the PIP joints are very, uh, you know, injuries are very common injuries and usually can be improperly diagnosed or treated by the physicians and Many injuries are usually also considered trivial by patients. It will be interesting to note whether these injuries are now less because of our, uh, you know, the corona situation, because we are not playing cricket. That is where we see most of these injuries. And uh, we had a mention about these things, how the collateral ligaments and the volar plate are the soft tissue stabilizers of the joint. And this together with the... Uh, Volar plate on the in the polar aspect and the collateral ligaments on the sides form what is called the ligament box complex. So this is very important for the stability of the PIP joint. And that's a soft tissue stabilizer. The body stabilizer is the congruent articular surfaces, as you can see here, and the structure, what is called the volar buttress. This is the volar buttress. It is the volar, about 50% of the volar bony area which provides the stability this is the most important structure and here in these fracture you can see that the volar buttress is gone and the frac and the joint has dislocated or subluxated so this is very important to reconstruct this um, structure in a chronic injury and the spectrum of chronic injuries as uh, Pangaj had mentioned there is a volar plate injury which can become chronic Collateral ligament injuries where the joint opens up. The central slip on the dorsal aspect can be injured. These are all the soft tissue injuries. And the bony injuries are the fracture dislocations. And uh, the other ones are the pylon fractures. So all these can produce chronic injuries, when, especially when these are more than six weeks old. I'm not going into the clinical evaluation much, but... Painful swollen joints, always be careful. You must get, as uh, Vipin was telling us, a true PA and lateral of the injured finger. That is very important. Other investigative modalities are the ultrasound and uh, CT scans and occasionally MRI. So do not accept an X-ray of the hand in these injuries. Always look for the finger injury X-ray. For this is an example. Here you have a hand AP and oblique views, which are commonly what you get. But see what happens when you see a lateral view. So there you can see. So this is the most important thing about radiological investigation. In a chronic injury, you look for this V sign. It suggests a persistent subluxation. So look for the V. And if it is there, you know it's a persistently sublux joint. And it needs treatment. Late presenting volar plate injuries, even though... It's a hyperextension injury presents usually as a flexion deformity. There are various uh, investigative modalities you can use if you are in doubt. And uh, you can give a trial of physiotherapy and splinting, but most of the times they may need a surgical ola plate release like this. This is a zigzag incision to expose the joint of the PIP or the volar approach. Sir, you are not audible. Are you you're not audible? Yeah, yeah, now now it is okay. Please go ahead. Okay. If I'm not too audible, you can shut off my video of my face. Then uh, I think the bandwidth improves. Yeah. The other one is collateral ligament injury, which are very difficult when you have a radial collateral ligament injury because the thumb keeps pressing the finger digits. So if you have a radial collateral ligament injury of the digits, it opens up and uh, it becomes very painful. This may need, again, investigations help like ultrasound and may need a ligament uh, reconstruction. Either direct repair is very unusual at six weeks or more 
and we may need a reconstruction with the graph like a Palmer's longer graph. The other thing you have is these chronic PIP injuries presenting as a butronite deformity. You can get a hyperextension of hyperflexion injury, presents as flexion deformity at the PIP and hyperextension at the DIP joint. This is the butronite deformity where characteristically the lateral bands sublux volarwards and produces the PIP joint flexion. And uh, early enough, if you want to get the management, you do this Elson test where you keep the finger on the side of a table and then try to extend against uh, resistance. So if the DIP joint is taut, it means the central slip is ruptured. So remember the Elson test if you, if, when you assess a patient. Chronic injuries, you can reconstruct the central slip by multiple techniques that are available in the literature. I usually prefer a Palmaris Longer's graft, or I can sometimes I use a split lateral band and approximate it into the center. Very rarely, you may have to do a PIP fusion. Dislocations, of course, uh, you know, most you never generally see an acute uh, chronic dislocation unless it is irreducible because the lateral bands or a flexor tendon interposes. And so in those situations, you may have to do an open reduction and remove these uh, interposed lateral bands or the flexor tendon. Also, look after these volar dislocations. They are very rare, but here you can see the dorsal lip fracture. That is, the central slip is attached to that. It needs reconstruction. We've already, uh, Dr. Pankaj has taken us through this, uh, the, the injuries, uh, the hyperextension, dorsal dislocation, and the fracture dislocations. So when more than 30% uh, of the Vola buttress is fractured, the joint becomes tenuous. It has got this tendency to subluxate dorsally. And definitely more than 50%, it is unstable. So this treatment is different as we have already seen. And when they are chronic, it becomes more difficult to treat and will need some of these uh, procedures which have already been mentioned. And uh, the, we have to reconstruct the Vola buttress. So, the management options are limited in these. You can do a distractor application, Vola plate arthroplasty, but the preferred technique on this is the hemihamate replacement arthroplasty. Also, sometimes if it is very chronic, you may have to do a PIP joint fusion. So, what is this hemihamate replacement arthroplasty? Let's uh, a sentence about uh, Vola plate arthroplasty. Dr. Pangaj has already shown it. It is just putting the Vola plate where the Vola buttress was. I like to do it only when it is less than 40% of the fractured surface. So the hemihamate is an osteochondral graft, which uh, we replace the dorsal surface. And it was originally described by Hastings. It's very useful in neglected cases. This is the what you do. The hamate articular surface is very similar to the base of the of, uh, middle phalanx. So you can actually replace the vola buttress with a hamate articular surface, it's this area. So this is what we do. That's a hamate, you can see. We have done some modifications, and we have reattached the Vola plate for the hamate graft. So this is what you do. After opening the joint, that is called the shotgunning. We release the collateral ligaments on either side, and we open out the joint, take the hamate osteochondral graft, and attach it with screws. So that's the replacing the thing. This is the uh, part of the modifications where we put a, the uh, intraosseous uh, sutures to reconstruct the, attach the, reattach the Vola plate. That's a Vola plate being reattached after the osteochondral graft is kept. So here's an example, 17-year-old by 10 uh, Month old injury, so that is a post op and five year follow up. That's a range of movement he has. So it's a very, very good operation for a chronic injury which came very stiff. Distractors can be used. I don't use it. This is uh, a case from my friend Dr. Sudhir. One year old injury, he had a distractor applied, and that is a post op range of motion. So that is done well. 
pylon fractures again once neglected you very difficult to do an open reduction internal fixation they may end up with a pip joint fusion we have tried in one of these uh, distractors a uh, modification of the suzuki and it did reasonably well what happens when there is osteoarthritis you may end up with a pip joint fusion or i do what is called a vola plate interposition arthroplasty this is different from the eaton's procedure these are the preferred pip joint arthrodesis angles from uh, 40 45 50 from index to little finger and we don't have this available in india yet but when it comes we can use that so this is the interposition of vola plate interposition arthroplasty where you put the vola plate as an interposition just a couple of cases nine month old injury patient received no treatment but came just to see me so this was his uh, range of motion question was he had full movement i just left it alone and uh, second case index finger eight week old injury he had the classic pip dorsal fracture dislocation it was chronic unstable and i opted to treat him with a hemi hamate replacement so that was done that is the open joint short done joint and that's the end result at three months five year old injury with osteoarthritis so look at the joint you can see there's no cartilage very painful he is a professional cricketer so this is where i did the the option was a pip fusion but he refused so i thought i'll try this vola plate interposition arthroplasty the joint was again opened that's a short turning of the joint and you see the cartilage is badly damaged so we mobilized the vola plate and attached it to the dorsal lip of the proximal phalanx and after uh, this is the follow up x ray you can see that the joint sir you got disconnected uh, there is no extension yeah. joint is uh, infected and ended up with a oh. can you hear me yeah okay we debrided the joint and mobilize some rotation uh, transposition flaps from the dorsum dual transposition flaps fused the pip joint and covered the joint and put skin graft where the original uh, the donor area and that was the the follow up so it healed well yeah, that's fine so to conclude these joint those injuries are not uncommon you must insist on a lateral view and recognize the specific injury to tailor the treatment thank you very much mm -hmm.